Please pray with me. Holy Spirit, open our hearts and minds today that in their union we might truly be renewed for your service in this world. Holy Spirit, breathe upon us, empower us, and equip us that throughout this week we might embrace what the world is so quick to reject, the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. Grant us your presence, O God, and fill all our lives with the hope of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. My friends, on this Palm Sunday, what image do you have of Jesus as he arrives in the holy city, not on a, a majestic steed of war or in a royal procession, but rather sitting on a donkey? Does it strike you as odd that God would allow his own son, his own flesh and blood to be nailed to the cross willingly? Or, or surprised you if I said that it was God who uh, initiated the events that we remember this coming Holy Week. As Dietrich Bonhoeffer said, it's no small thing that God allowed himself to be pushed out of the world on a cross. But friends, what may seem foolish to us and to the world and Jesus' weakness becomes the very wisdom and the mercy of the divine. I would imagine many of you remember the story of Achilles, the hero of the epic poem, The Iliad, by Homer. He became invincible when, as an infant, his mother dipped him into the river Styx. The only weakness that Achilles had was the spot where his mother held him as she dipped him into the waters of the river, his heels. According to the legend, Achilles was warned that if he went to Troy, he'd be killed. Convinced that he was invulnerable, he went anyway, only, only to be brought down by a, a poisoned arrow that pierced his heel. Greek mythology, according to Kenneth Hartzheim, is full of, of superheroes, but all of them have at least one weakness, passion or lust, greed or avarice, vengeance or cruelty, malice or ambition. In fact, the gods of Greece and Rome are everything that humans are, only amplified. The God, our God, is quite different. Jesus shows us that what many might think of as God's weakness is actually God's love for you and me. Jesus knew that if he went to Jerusalem, he'd be killed. Yet we are reminded in Scripture that Jesus set his face toward Jerusalem. Eugene Peterson put it this way in the message. He writes that Jesus gathered up his courage and sealed himself for the journey to Jerusalem. Perhaps the most subtle message of Palm Sunday is the determination of God to conquer Satan, to conquer evil, to conquer death. Not with their weapons, but his. Jesus was a, a simple and humble man on a simple beast of burden, riding to his fate, not for glory, not for power, not for might, but for love, for redemption and reconciliation. Jesus, you might say, in the guise of a fool bounding atop a beast of burden, headed for the humiliation of scourging and his cross, his crucifixion. And yet today, we worship him. Luke, uh, unlike the other Gospels, don't include the, the waving of, of palm branches. But there is a special uh, political meaning to this act of waving branches, waving palm branches. You see, the palm branch 
was actually a, a symbol of the Maccabean dynasty in Israel. You see, two centuries earlier, Judas Maccabees led a Jewish revolt that overthrew the, the Syrian army that occupied Israel. And the palm branch then became symbolic for all those who looked forward to a new warrior king, a political messiah who would come and overthrow the Roman occupation of Israel. When the people waved their palm branches, they were hoping for something quite different than what we read of and, and perhaps quite different than what we might think of because we know the story so well. You see, they were not hoping for a, a spiritual uh, solution for a spiritual problem, but for a political, military solution for a, a political problem. The occupation of Israel by Rome. You see, Achilles went to Troy thinking that he was invincible. But Jesus rode into Jerusalem with full knowledge that he was not only vulnerable, he was actually going to die as a, a solution to a spiritual problem, human redemption from sin. Of course, the disciples weren't able to perceive the importance of, of the circumstances. More than likely, they were just elated that at last, popular uh, sediment had rallied behind their master, Jesus. How could they have begun to comprehend that within five short days, that witness a different kind of procession, one in which Jesus would carry his own cross? My friends, Palm Sunday is a demonstration of God's desire to let nothing stand in the way of his plan for salvation. God doesn't accept hollow or pompous display. God asks for more than the waving of palm branches and shouts of Hosanna. It is the Herods and the Caesars, the kings and the emperors, the dictators and presidents and political candidates of this world who, who so often need, who, who crave shouts of Hosanna and popular acclaim. However, it's not just the, the military and the mighty that seek to be invulnerable. In reality, it is all of us. Christ, however, goes to the cross without a claim, without honor, vulnerable before Satan in the world. And he does it. He does it not for himself, but for you and me. Indeed, with all of Jesus' invitations to us, even commands of cross-bearing and humble servanthood, we should probably shake and shudder this morning as we sit in our comfortable homes. But just consider for a moment that when we are blessed to gather once again here in our magnificent sanctuary, our beautiful sanctuary, and I hope it will be soon, everything about us and our worship speaks, if you will, to stability and stature. I mean, how blessed we are. But then we must ask, do our lives then speak to the humble servanthood and the divinity of Christ? What roads have we traveled? What sacrifices have we made? How are our lives different from when we first professed our faith in Jesus Christ? Christ wants so little of you and me, but of that, He wants our all. Jesus' invitation, it would seem, is to put down our palms, to lower our voices in a cacophony of political rhetoric in both our culture and, yes, in many ways, uh, the church, the church universal, and pick up our cross. Jesus wants our all. And this demands our character both imitate and illuminate that of Jesus Christ. 
You know, it's very interesting to me. When the Great Wall of, of China was built, it stretched for thousands of miles. Its believers believed it to be impregnable, too high to be scaled, too thick to be breached, too long to circumvent. And yet, it was defeated three times in history, not by scaling, not by battering down, but by bribing its gatekeepers. You see, any wall is only as strong as the character of the people who keep its gates. Much the same as any community, any congregation, is only as strong as those who embrace its identity and its mission as followers of Jesus Christ. Palm Sunday carries with it all the overtones of the, the smugness and the fear of the Pharisees, the spiritual blinders of the disciples, the betrayal of Judas, the denial of Peter, the abandonment of those who were closest to Jesus, God's mighty fortress of, of love breached, as always, by human sin. But God's love prevails. It prevails because Jesus' humility is impervious to human adulation. His determination to do God's will immune from disobedience and from fear. His desire to finish what God had started stronger than life itself. His disciples failed Him. You and I fail Him. Others will fail Him, but He never fails us or His Father in Heaven. The events of this week, Holy Week, are so difficult that we usually focus merely on the glorious entry we celebrate today. And then we pass quickly over the suffering and the cross, and we rush forward to the resurrection. But my friends, there is no resurrection without the cross. In Jesus, God provides for human redemption and reconciliation. But the truth is, we don't need a minor change to be faithful. And it's impossible on our part. We can't stand before a, a holy and a righteous God and claim innocence. We need a Savior. We need a Savior interceding before God on our behalf. We need Jesus. Jesus' entry into Jerusalem and into human hearts is radically different from the world's understanding of, of knowledge and power and might. Many find it difficult to comprehend as, as portrayed in so many of the documentaries and movies, especially uh, this past week or even more so this coming week. You see, many of these movies, many of these documentaries, they review the events. They seek to understand the, the chronology, the archaeology, the, the impact and the consequences of the historical Jesus, but fail to understand, they fail to understand the meaning of his life. Because that originates. It originates in the heart of our loving God. God demonstrated that in the battle for human life and salvation, there is no stronger force than the love of Jesus. On the cross, He overwhelms and saves, not by might, but by love. I'd like to tell you a, a story, a a true story from the annals of history. Roswell McIntyre was a Union soldier. He deserted in the midst of a heated battle. He deserted. He ran away. But he was captured. He was tried. And he was sentenced to death. He appealed his death sentence to President Lincoln. Although he offered no reason except shame for what he had done, 
and the pledge that if given another chance, he would prove himself worthy. President Abraham Lincoln pardoned him. He pardoned him with a certificate that read, Executive Mansion, October 4th, 1864, upon condition that Roswell McIntyre of Company E of the 66th Regiment of the New York Cavalry returns to his regiment and faithfully serves out his term of service, making up for lost time, or until otherwise discharged, he is fully pardoned of any supposed desertion heretofore committed. And this paper is his pass to his regiment. And it was signed, Abraham Lincoln. This certificate is now in the National Archives in Washington, D.C. And written right across the face of it are the words, taken from the body of R. McIntyre after the Battle of Five Force, Virginia. It may consider you to know, however, that Five Forks, Virginia, is between Richmond and Appomattox. And that the Battle of Five Forks was one of the last cavalry engagements of the war. He died in one of the last engagements of the war. You see, no matter who you are, no matter how far you and I have run from what we've done. Our failure not be final because of God's love for us in Jesus Christ. Uh, consider this. If God had sent Jesus as a king upon a throne, we might have crawled to him out of fear. Had he enslaved us in the chains of a moral bond, we might have obeyed him out of shame. Instead, God demonstrates an eternal love that is liberating and free. Christ did not come to win the love of God for us, but to be, to be the gift of God's love for us. As an unknown poet once put it, Choose to love rather than hate. Choose to build rather than destroy. Choose to persevere rather than quit. Choose to praise rather than gossip. Choose to heal rather than wound. Choose to give rather than grasp. Choose to act rather than delay. Choose to pray rather than despair. Choose to forgive rather than curse. My friends, Palm Sunday represents an opportunity for us to choose. We're invited to accept the salvation the love, the freedom, and the humility of Jesus. We are invited to choose His way of peace, His way of service, His way of love. Indeed, think of this. Just think of this today and in the days to come. Who gave Jesus up? Who gave Jesus up for the cross? Ultimately, not Pilate for fear, not Judas for money, not the Pharisees or the teachers for jealousy, and not you or, or me to save ourselves, but the Father, the Father, our God in heaven, for love. Yes, it was God. God who initiated the journey of Jesus. And we remember that difficult journey of Jesus to his cross this week. But let us always remember God initiated it that we might be redeemed. 
In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.